But if you just give it to him and leave, what do
uh, the speaker of the hour, Linda K. Reed, the first lady of Mount Rose. Oh, wings as 
Eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not die. Amen. If you look back here for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now, we just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God. Father, it's not I, but it's you that stand, Lord God. It's you, Lord God, Father. I'm just a vessel, Lord God. Father, so let the words of the, my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God. You are my strength and my redeemer. Lord, I sit down that you may raise up. Lord God, that I may be your voice, Lord God. Father, to speak your word. And this we claim and we believe is done that some man, some woman, some boy, some girl may be saved, may be helped, may be delivered and set free through your word. And it's all that we claim and we believe that it's done. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Tonight we the Lord. Amen. amen. It, it is indeed again a great pleasure to stand before you. And in this thing, women who are working, watching, and waiting, great type. But I want to call you to think today, as women who are waiting, my title for the day, for the day is, I don't mind waiting. Amen. Can you say that with me? I don't mind waiting. Do you mind waiting? Amen. That's what we say. But a lot of times, we are not comfortable with waiting. When do you want it? You want it right now. Whatever it is. You can't wait. Right now. We are a microwave society. Instant money, instant success, instant healing, instant weight off. Help us out here. Instant meals, Twitter, Dating apps, movies on the band, music on the band, whatever it is, we want it right now. See, yesterday was too late. Tomorrow is too far away. And on today, I can't get you a vest enough. We have become a society of non waiters. And unfortunately, guess what we're wearing? A generation of non waiters also. That's non waiters. We have little patience, more problems, and less time. We don't give our time, ourselves time to succeed, and we quit even before we start. When I'm driving down the street and I see a red light, I look at that red light and I say, turn green, turn green, turn green. Because I'm a non waiter. When I'm sitting in the doctor's office, they call it respectfully, waiting. I get a little frustrated. Because I'm a nun And then when you go to the grocery store and you see folks, oh, can you hear me? I know I ain't by myself. And you see people in line and you way back there in the line, then the lady up there or the men that's up there in front, they knew they were checking them out. Why come they didn't get their money out when they were standing there in the line and checking them out? I know that we are all a number women. Yes, I am challenged in this way today. Why? Because a lot of times it's uncomfortable. I don't like being uncomfortable and waiting because it feels like a wasting time. It's sometimes discouraging because when I'm not doing anything, I feel like maybe I failed. But don't be despair. Don't be in despair. God has an answer for you. Wow. According to Miriam's dictionary, to wait means to stay or to delay an action until a particular time or until something else happens. But in the topical Bible, to wait means and is most importantly and frequently used as an attitude of the soul directed towards God. So to, to wait is not to stay, but it's your attitude. It's your demeanor towards God. It's about you having a listening ear, a heart responsive to the wound of God. John 6 and 
and 44 says, no one can come to Christ unless the Lord draws you. So when you're being wooed, you're being drawn. So to wait means God is drawing you. Oh. And I don't mind waiting. So now, to understand to wait is for me, is to have a heart that is confident and responsive to the pull of the Spirit. And I ask you, women and men of God, do you have a heart that is responsive to the pull of the Spirit? Or do you have a cold heart that every time the Spirit says something, you just block it out? Is it saying, come to me, and you say, Lord, not me? Or is it saying, come to me, and you saying, Lord, here I am? So spiritually, I don't need to lose weight. I need to gain weight. Not the W-E-I-G-H-T, but the W-A-I-G-H-T. All right, all right. Why is it that physically, when we haven't seen someone in a while, we can see if they lost or gained weight? You know when you go back to your high school reunion, and before you know, we all don't get to it. Before we go back, we say, I'm going to lose some weight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Most of the time we don't get there. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt trying. Amen. <laughs> and you notice that they gained or lost weight. Physically. But spiritually, we do not notice when we have gained. But we do notice when we lost it. Amen. You know how you know when you lost it? Because it affects their character. <laughs> Most of the time, they're chronic complainers. They are hard to get along with. Those are people who have lost their weight. We will say unto them, it looks like they're very busy, but they're not doing nothing. You're going down the road, but you ain't going to see nobody. Those are the people who lost their weight. But the word of God said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Say it with me. Say, they that wait Upon the Lord, shall that shall renew their strength. So who are you waiting on? Amen. The Lord. So that tells me when I wait on the Lord, He values me. When I wait on the Lord, He gives me strength. And I can see and look around the room right now. I see a lot of y'all how game is wait right now. So I tell you again, I don't mind waiting. I want to tell you about three things that we can gain while we wait. All right, all right, all right. One is strength. You don't need strength unless you're in a struggle. So if you have strength, that only means you that if you if you don't have strength, that only means that you have lost weight. Why? Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So why wait? So my weight is hooked up to my strength. And if you're losing weight, then my strength is lost. Then while I'm gaining strength or gaining weight, I know I'm gaining some strength. Some of you are here today and you're in a struggle. And you really don't understand that you are in the best place to struggle. Because the struggle is leading you to the place of strength. You can't get to the strength you need unless you got a struggle and unless you wait. So when you're in the struggle, don't be in despair. Just say, I'm just gaining some weight. And if you're gaining some weight, you know that it's a good thing. Then, not only do you gain strength, but you gain patience. When we are waiting, it's often because of a situation, whether it's wrong, right, or indifferent. Situations sometimes require an immediate response. And then there are times we got to wait. Sometimes that waiting doesn't feel good. And it's in that waiting that we develop patience. Patience is our capacity to accept or tolerate delays, troubles, and to deal with suffering. And it also helps us to understand how to deal with anger and being upset. When we lack patience, we make, we make minor situations become major terminations. When we lack patience, we make permanent decisions on temporary situations. When we lack patience, we make our decisions.
have is choice. So I tell you, you got to have compassion. We feel out of control. Because, like women, we like being in control. Can I get a witness? We like being in control. But when we wait, we give up our control. We let God have control. We feel useless almost when we have to wait. We feel like we're not producing anything. And we get impatient. Because we can't see nothing going on. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean nothing's going on. Amen. I thank God for Abraham and Isaac when they went up on the mountain. Because they went in faith and they went believing the word of God. But they didn't know that they were around coming up on the other side of the mountain. And I thank God that they waited. Amen. Once they got to the top of the mountain. James Cleaver said, please be patient with me. God has not proven me in. Amen. So while you're waiting, just ask your sister beside you, your brother beside you, just be patient with me. God has not proven me in. James 4, 2 and 4 said, tell us, it tells us rather, to tell it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, it means there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to be going through. But you got to count it all to I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. When you're going through some mess, sometimes you think you're all by yourself. But the word of God says, count it all to How many of us count it all to We don't count it all to We tend to complain and we continue to, we continue to give up. But the word of God says, count it all to When you come into that temptation, know that the trying of your faith what does it do? It works. Yeah. But let patience have its perfect work. Yeah. That he may be perfect. Because see, when you wait and you allow that patience to grow and to mature in you, guess what? It's going to have a perfect way work on you. And this word of God says, and you are entitled, wanting nothing. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm going to wait and I'm going to be patient because I want to be whole. Yeah. Entire wanting nothing. So we can count it all joy when we're waiting because we're developing patience. And then lastly, we develop maturity. Circumstances produce resistance, and resistance produce change. A lot of times we don't want change. So when we come into situations and we come into circumstances and trials and tribulations, when we come into things that cause us to step back and take another look because it don't, it don't feel good, it may be too hard, it may seem that it's not for us, guess what? It's a time for you to mature. <laughs> As a woman, the normal pregnancy time is nine months. Now, while that baby is in your womb, it is developing, it is maturing, it's lungs, it's brains, it's body, it's bones, it's system, they are mature. And when that if that child is carried to full term, that child has a likelihood of being able to sustain outside of the womb. However, a child born premature is underdeveloped. Possibly a sign of a possible defects. Deformity and has delayed learning. Their sustainability is questionable. That's what happens to an immature believer. When you're underdeveloped, it credits your walk in the Lord. An underdeveloped believer, when somebody makes a man in the church, they'll leave the church. And my husband said, You won't leave the job, you won't leave the law, you won't leave the home, but you'll leave the church. That you who have been blood washed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, changed, I know I am, and you have walked away from God. But that's what an unbeliever, an immature believer does. But a mature believer, one they do, they stand foot that foot in the mouth. To see the salvation of the Lord, they say, I am like a tree that's planted by the river of the water. I will not be moved. And when you say, come on, they say, come on, they will bring it all that you got. Because I don't mind going to the Well, Whatever comes up, they can handle it. And as a mature believer, because we're waiting, we're going to be able to handle it out. We can run and not be weary. 
We can walk and not think because we waited on the Lord. So when people come up to you and they ask you, do you mind waiting? You can look them square in the eye and say, no. I know that's not proper English for some of you all. But no, I don't mind waiting. Why do I mind waiting? Because the Lord said, when I wait upon the Lord, yeah. he shall renew my strength. Yeah. He said, I shall mount up the wings as eagle. Amen. Because of an eagle, when he goes into the air, he going against the resistance. And when we're going up against the resistance, as we sometimes do trials and tribulations, the word of God said, it gives me an uplift. Yeah. And I can rise above my circumstances. He said, I can soar with the eagle. He said,
It's over. So all you got to do is just believe in it, then don't hear it. But I know that he will make every good day more blessed. If you're here today, look at what church on. Kind of even back to the Christian. Look at the Christian, you want to let it. You don't have to wait. Your way is open. You can be saved right now. All you have to do is walk out the house and go to see it. And you can do it right now. If you hear the day, you're on the count.
but we're gonna we're gonna lay it out for these sisters. All right. I know some of you feel like go home. You, you need to make sure you serve this sister because they are here in the house and we're gonna bless all our guests. And there is another church that I'm gonna look just please charge it to my head, not to my heart. We bless God for you. But you all please stand as we prepare to go to the Bible fellowship. Okay?